Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching City Cycle Hum, and you might have noticed that this unboxing video is off to a very unusual start because the guitar is not in a box. I already took it out of the box. So what's going on here? Well, I already filmed and edited the vast majority of the video that you're going to watch later. I filmed that last week, but in that video, I discovered a significant amount of setup issues with this guitar. So I decided to sit on the video for a few days and kind of self-reflect and think about this guitar. And then this morning I woke up and I had a wild hair to do a full setup on it. So that's what I did. I addressed all the issues and I was able to get it playing great. It plays just fine now. There's a lot of other elements that are subjective you know, go listen to it in the rest of the video when I'm playing it and whatnot. But I was able to address all those issues and it got me thinking of a premise that I want to pitch at the beginning of this video as a point of discussion for the comment section, whether you're watching the premiere or watching this years later, who knows? But anyways, the premise is that I think that there is a huge difference between affordable guitars, which this is, by the way, this is a sub $200 guitar. I think it's like 170 or something like that. There's a huge difference between an affordable guitar that I would confidently recommend to a beginner guitarist or even a guitarist buying their first electric, moving over from acoustic or something like that versus a guitar I would recommend to an established guitarist that knows how to do setups and they're looking for a project starter. I think this is the latter. And there are plenty of guitars that can be both and there are plenty of guitars that are one or the other. But this guitar, after setup, it's fine. You're gonna see in the video that there were intonation issues with the bridge and there were issues with the nut. Now you might not have me pegged as someone who does nut stuff, but when it's necessary, I'll do nut stuff. And I needed to file out most of these nut slots because they were not cut deep enough, which is a problem that I think most people can address at home if they feel like doing it. I use a really cheap little kind of welding file tool here to file out nut slots when they're not deep enough. These things are not expensive. Anyone can get these things and use them to deepen their nut slots. But it's the sort of thing where I would not expect a beginner guitarist to even be able to diagnose the issues. They don't have the experience yet to know when they're out of intonation or even what intonation is, especially if they're moving from an acoustic guitar that doesn't have any way to adjust that. I wouldn't expect them to know when a nut isn't cut deep enough and needs the slots to be deepened because you know, you're pulling out a tune. They're just going to think that they're playing poorly because they're new to the instrument. They're going to think there's something wrong with the way they're playing and it's going to be discouraging to them. So with that in mind, I don't think this is a guitar that is worth recommending to new guitarists. I got it with major setup issues, which means other people will probably get it with major setup issues. And hopefully the manufacturer will take this video to heart and, you know, be able to change something, even if it means making a more expensive guitar, but having a guitar that ships set up much, much better because this had a lot of stuff going on. But like I said, I think it would be a great project starter for the experienced guitarist. The neck itself feels really nice, really nice full shape to it. It's a glossy neck, but it's not like rubbery or sticky. It's nice and smooth and glossy. Uh, you either like the finish or you don't. There's little details that you like or you don't, but you know, like say you wanna swap the bridge for a nicer bridge, that's like a $30 upgrade depending on what you get. The pickups are Alnico 5s. I find them to be uh, pretty noisy, so the guitar needs to be like shielded or something like that. But like I said, $170, a possible project starter. I think there is merit there, but I can't recommend it to a new beginner. So anyways, let's get to the regular video. Thanks for dealing with my little intro here and I hope you enjoy it and I hope we can have you know, kind of like a meaningful conversation about that general premise down in the comment section. All right, here we go guys. Hello, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum and in this video, I'm unboxing another Bad Cat guitar. This is actually the third guitar that Bad Cat has sent me. They sent me that acrylic guitar hanging behind me, which I honestly really enjoy. They sent me a Les Paul style thing, a gold top Les Paul style guitar, which I thought was good enough. I thought it was good enough that I gave it to a personal friend, a local pedal builder that needed a humbucker guitar in his life. So I wouldn't give it away to a friend if I didn't think it was good, you know? <laughs> so anyways, what we have here 
is a Strat style guitar. So let's open it up and check it out and see what we've got. I vaguely remember that it's coming in some sort of interesting black sparkle finish. I'm interested to check that out to see what that's like. Now these are sub $200 guitars. The price changes based on the finish that you select. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be throwing things at my tripod, huh? Typical import guitar styrofoam sarcophagus here. Sometimes I think it would be fun to build like an outer space set behind me, do like a mystery science theater a 2000 sort of thing where I'm on a space set and pretend I'm in orbit or whatever. And then I'd save like, you know, pieces like this to make wall panels. But I've never been able to convince myself to commit to that aesthetic, even though it would be a lot of fun, right? I could have a robot friend. Who doesn't want to have a robot friend? Got your wiggle stick and your cheap throwaway cable there. Here we go. The slow unbagging reveal. There's the headstock. Just a peek. It's a tease, guys. Oh. 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 You thought you saw it, then you didn't. Now it's back. <laughs> oh. Got a glossy neck here. Polaris series. Bad Cat labeled closed back tuners. Now this is interesting. It is black with a silver sparkle in there. Hopefully the camera is picking that up. What an interesting finish. I have a feeling the main camera is not going to pick up that sparkle very well, but maybe I'll be surprised. Take some of the plastics off of here. I don't know if I want to deal with taking the plastic off the entire pit guard right now. I might just leave that. So what do we have? We've got a very glossy neck here with a skunk stripe on the back. Rosewood fingerboard. Bunch of frets. <laughs> Three pickups, you know, typical Strat appointments, volume, tone, tone. Kind of what you expect visually out of a budget Strat style bridge here. No surprises there with the style of the saddles or anything like that. First impressions on the frets, on the fret ends anyways. I mean, they're nothing spectacular, nothing incredible. Certainly not the worst frets. I've ever run across at this price point. They're pretty much exactly what you would expect the edges of frets to be on a slightly sub $200 guitar. The tops of the frets are nice and chromey. They really polished them. They're really bright and shiny. So that's nice. Let's plug it in. I want to plug it in and check it out. There's only so much I can figure out just by looking at it, right? Got to get the wiggle stick in there. Can't have a, uh, S-type guitar video without a little bit of wiggle stick action. It is wiggly. <laughs> it fits tight right about there, which is not ideal. I'm gonna do my Teflon tape thing with it. This is what I do with all my screw-in style wiggle stick arms. As you get a roll of this cheap, like 99 cent Teflon plumber's tape and wrap it around the threads a bunch of times. And then your wiggle stick will fit in there nice and snug. It's a really cheap modification that works really well. I also have some of those fender springs that I'm sure some of you are typing out a recommendation for right now. And I have used them. They do help with the arm flopping around, but they don't help with the tightness of the actual threads. You still get rattle with those springs dropped in there. But now, no rattle at all. That's what I like. And I do that on every 
guitar with a screw-in wiggle stick. It's not just to fix problem guitars. It's every guitar with a screw-in wiggle stick. It just makes it feel firmer and uh, more enjoyable across the board. That was the sound of my volume pedal squeaking. It squeaks when I don't have my full weight on it. But I put my full weight on, and now it's not squeaky. Stretching the strings out to give it the best possible chance it can have to be tuning stable. All tuned up. Let's check it out. See what this guitar sounds like. Feels like, plays like. Let's just find out what it's like. I am on the number two position right now. So the bridge and the middle pick up together. The trim is set up about how I like my trims to be set up. I'd probably loosen the springs just a little bit to get it closer to a floaty sort of feel, not actually floating. I like the bridge to rest on the body. It's clanking a little bit there. But it's pretty dang close to how I set up my own personal strats. Plenty of twang there. Mega Strat style dive there. There goes my tuning, right? A serious like sitar ringing situation going on with that high E. Is it the nut? Clears up a little bit when I fret it. But I don't think it's clearing up all the way. Sometimes that's a bad break angle out of the string saddle or like a burr or something in the nut. Much better. Yeah, much better now. I was able to scrape out some debris and some gunk that was in that nut slot with my pocket knife. It looked like it might have been polishing compound or maybe even dust left over from cutting the nut. And the string was just, I think, sitting on top of that and giving it room to vibrate and buzz within that nut slot. So glad I was able to solve that right now in the moment. Now I can actually show off this guitar. So we have been on the number two position. Here is the bridge position. Bright, bright, bright. Classic Strat. Over the top, bright twang. Plenty of single coil hum there. Picking up the lights here in the garage. Lightsaber sounds. Let's try it with some reverb.
It does the thing. It does the ice picky, bright strat sort of thing. Now, is it gonna be classic wiring or is it gonna be modern? No tone control on the bridge. Classic wiring. Strats are such weird guitars. Like we think of them as kind of the default standard guitar, but they're so weird. The wiring is weird. The look is weird. Like compared to every guitar that came out before this and the look is weird. We're just used to seeing it. We're used to the concept now, but it is, it's a really odd duck. So that has been the bridge pickup. Back to the number two. Nice and quacky on the number two. Here is the middle position. Feels like it needs the action lowered. Just a smidge. It's a little bit too high for my tastes at the 12th fret. The relief looks fine, so it's gonna be a bridge adjustment. Yeah, the truss doesn't need to be adjusted, just the bridge saddles, just to get it within my personal preferences. I'd rather have an affordable guitar like this show up with the action a little bit too high than too low because a new guitarist buying a guitar like this, if the action is too low, the whole thing's just gonna buzz out across the entire fretboard and then it's gonna be completely unusable to them. But slightly high, it's gonna be less comfortable for a more seasoned player, but at least it'll be usable, right? So it's better to have the action a little bit high. to the number four position. There's a serious amount of noise with the single coils. This guitar needs to be shielded, I think. I'm used to noise, I'm used to 60 cycle hum, but that's a little bit more than normal. But at least the number two and number four position cancel it, right? Sounds nice to me. And on to the neck pickup. I'm definitely gonna have to lube the nut. I might have to adjust how close the string trees are to the, to the headstock. Sometimes string trees I found can bind up the string and cause tuning stability issues as well. effects on that just now. 
let's drive some dirt. I've got the Wampler Bell overdrive here. We'll go back to the neck pickup and work our way back. All right, that's a problem. I found I found a significant problem here. Uh, the A string nut slot is not cut deep enough, and the E and the D also could be a little bit deeper. And what happens when a nut slot isn't deep enough is that you're pressing the string down further than you should, and it's pulling the string more than it should be pulled, and it pulls the string out of tune in the lower frets, in the cowboy chord area, where you need all the strings to be in tune for your chords, especially if you're a beginner and stuff like that. So that is a quality control issue here. You might get a guitar that doesn't have that issue at all. You might get a guitar with that issue on one string or a different string or all the strings, I don't know. It can be fixed relatively easily, but not here in this video. That is a bummer. I was wondering why my big open chords up here sounded off. I kept trying to tune it. You can hear that B is just pulling the whole chord out a little bit. But then the interesting thing about this is if you play that same chord shape further up the neck as a bar chord, like here's a C, it's fine. It's because it doesn't have the leverage that you have up here at the nut to pull the whole string out of tune when the nut's not cut deep enough. Ooh. Yeah, because the E is off a little bit too when fretted and you're holding the A string, that G is, is quite a bit wonkier than the E. That's a bummer. That's a real bummer. I'll, I'll show you the tool that I use to fix this. This isn't technically a nut file system. It's a tip cleaner file set for welding, but it has all these little needle files in here. You can use these, and it's a relatively inexpensive tool. You can use these to find the one that fits your nut slot and just gently file it out a little bit at a time until you get the depth that you need. These don't work very fast. You're not gonna get yourself in trouble quickly. So it's kind of like idiot proof in a way, uh, but it will do the job. I have fixed nuts with this tool before. I'll find one of these on Amazon or something and have a link down below. All right, let's get back to testing out the pickups with an overdrive. Here is the Wampler Bell on the neck pickup. Kind of has that bright, grindy, but very sparkly, clear ceramic pickup sort of sound. I don't know if it actually is ceramic pickups. They might be El Nico, but it has that sound. Here is the number four position. I want to check the intonation. This whole thing sounds like it's pulling out a tune to me now. Now that I'm listening for it, I'm like getting bugged. This guitar did not get the setup it needed out of the warehouse. Um, everything's going a little bit flat. <laughs> the 12th pickup. I'm trying to find a safe range to play this thing. I'm sorry, Bad Cat. 
But there's issues with this guitar, with the setup. It's setup stuff. People can fix these issues. But like if a new guitarist was getting this guitar, which it's in that price range where a new guitarist would be buying this guitar. There certainly are hobbyists out there, like people like me, who like to pick things like this up and turn them into projects and whatnot, and they'll be able to address all those issues. But imagine being a new guitarist and getting this guitar because you could afford it. And you don't know why everything you're playing sounds off. You can't figure it out. You don't know why these issues happen, but you're running into them and it's discouraging to you. Like, it's a bummer. That's a bit of a bummer. All right, we'll stick around the fifth fret. That seems to be a safe space for now. And for all of you out there that think that if you're watching a paid demo, that it's never going to be honest and it's going to hide, you know, issues with instruments and stuff like that. This is a paid demo. All right, let's keep moving. Here is the middle position with dirt. going here is the number two and here is the bridge Output. These are not weak sounding pickups to me. They've got plenty of punch and output to them. They look like they have decent magnets in them. They're not like the cheap chromed over looking magnets. They look like the nicer style magnet poles. Let's go through it from tip to tail and I'll open up the back panel and we'll have a look at the block as well. Headstock design. I don't mind it. It's got that little bit of a beak there that you see on non-Fender style Strat guitars. You know, various brands that want to indicate that bulb, but they can't quite do it. <laughs> but I think it's a fairly attractive version of that. I hate it when there's a hook. So there's not a hook. It's just a little bit of a point on the bottom of that bulb. The tuners are fine. They're smooth enough. They're firm enough. They have a little bit of a sticky feel, but there's no jump there, which is nice. I hate it when a, a tuner is jumpy, like going back and forth and there's a dead space there. None of that going on. I think the gloss and the finish on the neck and the headstock is attractive. It's not sticky. It's kind of that glassy smooth sort of feel that I appreciate. The frets, now that I've been playing them, are totally fine. Totally fine frets for this price point of guitar. That nut, it needs help. It needs help. Thankfully, none of the strings are cut too deep. They're all just cut too shallow and they need to be cut deeper. If you don't want to do the work yourself with you know, a cheap tool like this or a set of files, you could take it to a tech. But by the time you do that, you probably could be, you know, with the money you spend, you could already be spending that money on a higher end guitar that likely won't have that issue. Like this is something that I've encountered on guitars in this price point, you know, it's because there's not as much quality control as these go out of the factory. But the frets don't seem to be dead anywhere across the fretboard. And that little buzz there was my fault. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't encountered any dead frets, uh, but yeah, I had that sitar buzz at the beginning because there was debris in the nut saddle. So the nut 
has been an issue on this guitar. The bridge is fine. It's fine. It's what you would expect out of a guitar of this price point. Those kind of like chromed saddles. Like I've seen those style of saddles a million times. The pick guard and the plastics all seem very normal. They don't seem cheap or out of the ordinary. Got a three ply pick guard here, which looks fine. The great thing about this format is that there's an endless amount of aftermarket parts out there. So you could buy this and turn it into whatever you want it to be with aftermarket parts. I, this looks like a standard strap pick guard to me. I, I really doubt it's anything different. The finish is interesting, kind of the starry silver glitter on black. I don't see any big like quality control issues in the finish. It has like the plastic spacer on the neck plate panel there. I mean, the hardware is exactly what I would expect out of a guitar of this price point. Once I Teflon wrapped the trim arm, it was nice and firm. It seems to be smooth enough and operate in a normal way. I can tell from here that the trim block is the thinner style, which I honestly don't mind. It indicates a, a cheaper trim unit, but I've kept the thin block in my 90s Mexican strap forever. I actually swapped it out once and then I swapped it back in because I found out that I preferred it. It's a different type of feel, but I don't think a thin block is necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, thin block, three springs. Everything else looks normal. Kind of a gritty route in there, but I see that on all sorts of guitars with polishing compound left over and stuff like that. So what do you guys think? The nut issues are a bummer. The intonation, I can fix. And everyone should learn how to fix on their own. You should learn how to address your own intonation by adjusting screws and whatnot. I can fix that probably not 10 or 15 minutes. But the nut issues, that's not something I like to deal with, with a new guitar of any price point. Unfortunately, it can be more common than it needs to be on affordable guitars. But that's going to be a bummer, especially to new guitarists that are trying to buy an affordable instrument and get their start. They're not going to know what's going on. They're going to think it's their fault that the guitar sounds out of tune when they're learning their chords. They're going to have no idea. So that's a huge bummer to me. That's a huge bummer. But what do you guys think? Uh, is there anything about this guitar that you find compelling where maybe it would be a project starter for you or something like that? You want that finish? You want that kind of like starry night, sparkly, silver on black sort of look? I wouldn't fault you for that. You just want the finish. You just want the body. You want a project starter. You like the look of the neck as it is. You're like, oh, I can fix nut problems if I get a neck with, with nut problems or whatever. But th those are significant issues. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude, nasty comments, support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked. Click the links down below and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.